Hi, I'm Sissy Graham Lynch. Welcome to Fearless, helping you have a fearless faith in a compromising culture. Welcome back to Fearless. And today I happen to be in the studio at the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, which is always a special treat. I live in Southwest Florida, for those that don't know. And so when I get to come up here to Charlotte, North Carolina, and I pull onto the property right off the Billy Graham Parkway, I'm just reminded of God's goodness every time I come onto this property. And that no matter where God calls us, we are called to share the good news of him. We are in some difficult and chaotic days. I think it's very obvious that we're living in a dysfunctional time. Not, um, you know, Christians have always seen difficult times. The world has seen difficult times, but we're just in a time of confusion, a time of chaos. And it's all I can think of is just dysfunctional. But with all of that, there is just so many great opportunities through that to share the love of God. And for those that um, would like to know, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, our chaplains have been serving in Ukraine along with Samaritan's Purse. And even in those hardships, to see the stories of God's goodness, those who are able to share the love of Jesus in those moments, God will take everything to use for his good. And speaking of Ukraine, you know, when we look at the news, we kind of wonder, how do we talk these issues with our children? Do we talk about these issues with our children? Do we talk about current events? Do we watch the news? And the reason I share this is because this recently happened in my home. I personally always have, I shouldn't say I always have the news on, but we do watch the news at night or in the morning. And a friend and our neighbors came over and they have children and they were kind of coming in and out of the house and they were grabbing snacks. And, um, you know, Ukraine and the events of what's happening in the Ukraine were on. And there were some graphic images. And the mother looked at her son and goes, oh, but you shouldn't be watching that because, of course, his eyes were gravitated to it. And she looked at me and she asked, just as a good friend and out of curiosity, she wasn't upset by any means. She goes, do you let your kids watch the news? And my answer was simply yes. And I know many of you out there with young children probably have the same question. How do we watch this with our children? How do we explain it? Should we hide it from them? And there's a lot of different resources that would tell you different opinions. But for me and my family, we watch it. I don't hide that from my children. I grew up that way. My dad um, with Samaritan's Purse and my grandfather with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association were often on the front lines of many of these current events and these humanitarian crises. And just like we are today in Ukraine or when um, with Afghanistan and helping the refugees with that. So I always saw pictures of my father helping. I saw the tough photos. I can remember as a little girl seeing the photos and hearing the stories from my dad's staff about Rwanda and the genocide of what happened there. And for me, my dad always said, you know, what he does there, you know, he's going to serve those in the dishes of life, those in the storms of life, and he's going to serve on them and love on them and help them to share the love of Jesus. And so with my children in my home, Corey and I are very open with our children. And my son, sometimes my daughter, she can kind of come and go and doesn't gravitate it. But my boy's different because little boy's are so different, especially when you're seeing tanks and army men, as he calls them. His eyes gravitate. He'll sit in Corey's lap. And he was very inquisitive about like Afghanistan and what was happening. And then, of course, just recently with what's happening in Ukraine, he's asked more questions. And I was um, a colleague reminded me of the story in Luke. In the chapter 13, it says, Now there were some present at the time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifice. And Jesus answered, Do you think that they were worse sinners than all those other Galileans because they had suffered this way? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you too will perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all perish. And what he was explaining and what he took away when he used to be a journalist was these were current events that were happening. And these people, they had questions about what was happening in these current events and why these bad things were happening to these people where they were guilty. But Jesus used these current events to tell people about him about his love and about repentance. And that's what I grew up with. That's the example that my father taught me, is that when he went to go serve in these areas, 
the purpose wasn't just to give them shelter. The purpose wasn't just to give them food or medicine. The main purpose was there to share the love of Jesus, but in the ways that they needed it, but to ultimately that they would have a relationship with Jesus. Even when the events were over and Samaritan's Purse would leave or the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association would leave, that these people would have a relationship with Jesus. So when we talk about these events that are happening in our family, I have a maybe you're asking these questions, you got little ones. I have a few tips that we do in my family not saying they're right. I have no PhD with my name. These are things that have worked in my family. Some other people might have different opinions. But um, I do believe these current events are happening around the world. And whether we talk about it with our children or not, they are going to learn about it. Um, Recently, and I'll tell this funny story, recently my son, we were at the dinner table, and he said, I don't like Biden. He's a bad guy. What? Um, And first, people might think he heard that from me. I've never said those words about our president ever in front of my children. Now, people know politically where I stand and who I voted for. I've never hidden that. But I have never disrespected um, our president. I am very careful what I say in front of my children because I didn't like it when people were disrespectful about Donald Trump in front of their children or other people because no matter who our president is, we show respect. And so I knew my son had never heard that from me. And so as we started talking, I was asking him questions. Well, how did you hear? Or why do you say that? And I said, we can't say such strong comments about people without having a reason. Now, my son's only five. And I said, where did you hear that from? And he mentioned somebody at school. (laughs) So to my point, even at five years old, kids are talking. They hear what we say or they see stuff on the news. They interpret in their own ways and they're talking to their friends. So I do think it's important that we as parents are the ones that are addressing this with our children. But anyways, with this story, I also, you know, I mentioned, Austin, you can't say things if you don't have a reason. So tell me why you think that and why you said those comments. And he goes, well, you remember, mommy, you remember back a couple months ago, he gave all the weapons to the bad guys. And I said, yes, I do. And he was regarding to what happened in Afghanistan. Because when Afghanistan happened, my son was really asking a lot of questions. And he asked the question, why do those bad guys have all those weapons? So we've had to explain it to him in ways that he might understand. But trust me, at five, they get it. And he asked me one time, he goes, well, why would our president give the bad guys our weapons? And I said, buddy, I don't know. But you're very smart at five to understand that that shouldn't be happening. But So my point with all of that was he actually was reasoning in his mind. That was months before, and he could still remember what he saw on TV, and he was reasoning. So our children are smart. They are sponges. We do have to be careful how we talk to them and how we explain things to them. But I do think as we as parents should have those conversations, just like all these tough topics that our world is facing, we as parents should be. So a few things that have worked, like I said, there, this is no special formula. But the first thing is we let our children ask the questions. We do have the news on. My son, like I said, sits and asks all kinds of questions, unless sometimes like the story I just shared and he made a statement, a very blatant statement then I'll ask them their understanding of that statement. You know, ask them the whys and what do they understand of it so I can have a better understanding of where they're coming from. The next is we, of course, we try to explain it in a simple way that they would understand, a way that's always not emotional. That's another tip. I'm not emotional. I don't get heated when I'm watching the news. I don't get angry when I'm watching the news. But to be very reasonable with them when we're in um, – I shouldn't, you shouldn't be a hothead when you're explaining the current events. I think, too, back in COVID, when COVID was happening, that my kids never lived a day in fear because they never saw me as the parent living in fear. Now, we talked about what was happening. We talked about the dangers of COVID, especially in those early, early days, um, but that we didn't have to fear. And I would bring it back to why that God calls us to be strong and courageous that our hope is in him, our peace comes from him. You know, those are the moments I'm allowed when we're putting our children to bed at night, that we can have those conversations and they open up and can't stop talking at night. And you have those wonderful opportunities with them. You can always bring it back to what our hope as parents are in. So I think, too, to remember, um, consider your own reactions when you're talking about these issues with your children, because they are going to mimic whatever you do. And... um, 
you know, you see a lot of kids that might struggle these days with stress and anxiety. They probably have seen that through their friends or their, through their family members because they're reacting off other people's reactions. Um, you know, some experts, and I say that, quote, like some experts maybe that have more of an education than me, um, but I don't always call them experts just because they have like a PhD. I look at some of the experts or like the mamas and the dads who have been there and done that, who have lived it and have maybe learned the hard way sometimes with raising children. I look to those mothers in my life as the experts. Um, and they, they've had common sense. But some say that you shouldn't. I read an article from a media group that helps with media and children and how we should raise that. Not a Christian organization. But they said you shouldn't um, talk to children under seven. And you should hide all kinds of news from them until they're seven. And I think that's impossible in the world that we are in. My children, like I said, my son is five. And when my friend asked me, you know, do you allow your kids to watch this? And I said, absolutely. Because I think of the little children that are five or seven who are fleeing their homes in Ukraine. I look back at pictures of when people were fleeing from Venezuela and coming across that bridge with only their backpacks on and carrying their children. Or you think recently what we saw last year in Afghanistan. You think of moms fleeing to the airport with any kind of hope to get out of that country with their children, that some moms were just fleeing their children over at U.S. soldiers just to get them to safety. Children around the world since the beginning of time have seen war and that those children haven't been able to be protected. They've lived it. They've seen it. They've lost everything to it. Now, we as a nation here in the United States and as parents, we've had the gift of freedom um, the precious gift to raise our children in freedom. And that has been a luxury that generations in other countries have not had until this nation. And so don't take that for granted. So I use those things to remind my children when we talk about that, when I put them to bed at night, we pray for the children in Ukraine. We pray for these children, you know, in Afghanistan that have lost everything. And I use an example as like my kids were being so picky the other day with what they were eating. And I don't always relate. We can't always relate into their small brains back to a child that has nothing. You should be appreciative and these kids have nothing and you have everything. That's not going to relate to them. But I do ask them the simple question. They were being so picky. They had had like three things to eat and they just didn't like any of it. And I'm a pretty strict mama. I don't really you eat it or you get nothing. Um, but this day... I looked at them and I said, Margaret, with the news that you just saw and those kids with the bombs going off in Ukraine, do you, do you think they would be appreciative of this milkshake that you just got? And she goes, yes, ma'am. And I said, you need, to be, you need to think more carefully about wasting things and being more careful of what other children might appreciate that we take for granted. And she sat there for a little bit. Now she did cry. I didn't mean to make her cry. And she goes, Mommy, later, she goes, Mommy, you're right. I should have appreciated that more. So I think it's good and it's healthy for us to remind our children of the blessings they've been given. And my children have grown up a little bit different. You know, we work in the summers at Samaritan's Purse um, with Operation Heal Our Patriots. And they have seen wounded veterans, double amputees. They've seen triple amputees. They've seen wounded men. And my son and children and daughter have asked, you know, why has he lost his legs? And we answer those questions and how we are now serving them and helping them. I think too often we're always talking about our feelings. Now, there's a time and place for that. But with children, how do you feel? We're talking about feelings. And when you look at generations before, it was just very factual. Um, not that you can't integrate feelings, but I've seen this trend where it's about ourselves and the feelings turn in more about us. And it's me, me, me. And I think that can be a dangerous place. Like I look back at these last couple of years and when COVID happened and I remember, you know, seniors in high schools, they didn't get their prom, they didn't get their high school. And everybody's like, the children, the children, the poor children. And those are sad things. I'm not saying I wouldn't be disappointed if I had missed out on my senior graduation. But the reality is that they're not being shipped off to war like many generations. They're not how blessed they are to still go to a college education and how blessed they are to live in a peaceful home and a loving home with shelter and food. Like you have to bring it back to 
what we should be praising the Lord for. These basics of life that for generations before um, were not like freely given and we've been blessed in this nation. And so I just always be careful with the feelings part is that we can still stand strong and we can be compassionate, but um, just be careful where that line is drawn because I think feelings can take away from the goodness of God a lot of times when we're choosing to look at all the bad. And so lastly, one other thing I think to consider is sometimes the different personalities of children. Each child can handle different things. My daughter, I know growing up, um, well, she's only eight. She's still growing up. But at a young age, she was fascinated with sharks. She could handle like scary movies like Jaws. Um, For an example, my son, he could not. That would give him nightmares for days. So when it comes to the news, you know your children the best. And so I think these are wonderful opportunities when we do watch the news that we explain it in ways that are happening, that our children do know that bad things happen in this world, that there is suffering in this world. But those are the moments that we as Christians are called to serve. That's how I grew up under the world of Samaritan's Purse and watching my dad being called to different mission fields and different humanitarian crises to serve in the name of Jesus. And so that was just a little story that has happened in my family when the neighbor's kid came over and I had the news on. And the mother wanted to know, do we allow our children to watch these current events? And I realized there are probably other moms, other parents out there who are asking the same question. So I would encourage you, do watch the news. Don't hide it from it. Use it opportunities to talk to your children, to speak truth into them, but also to instill peace inside of them. That peace will be shown through you, um, the peace of Jesus, and pass it on to your children. And I want to thank you all for those who are listening or those who are watching and those who have supported Samaritan's Purse and the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and our efforts in Ukraine. We're so grateful. And if you would like more updates of what's happening and how we are serving, I encourage you to check out the websites BillyGraham.org and SamaritansPurse.org to see the latest of how we are serving the people in Ukraine. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Fearless. I'm Sissy Graham Lynch.